stromatolites uh, and <laughs> below the eulytic zone. <laughs> Things like what were back there in that road cut that we really couldn't see very well, or there are also large mound-shaped bodies. Some of the mounds definitely have, have or had cavities in them that have uh, uh, draped rhinalsis uh, uh, inside those cavities. Rhinalsis is a bacterial, uh, maybe algal, maybe uh, no one knows what, inside those cavities. And that's also, in, in the mining company terminology, this would be a reef this would be barrier reef. That would have been a barrier reef back there. Everything was reef. All the stuff starting from the deepest part of the ramp going back into the peritidal cycles. And really there's at least, you know, there's several different distinct types that fit in, in distinctly different settings of bound stones. And, and uh, we're trying to unravel that as well now. Are the derby formations. They're identical to what was in parts of the old lead belt, parts of the Bon Terre uh, subdistrict or Bon Terre mine area. Yeah. But they're they're large mound-like structures that must have been pretty cotton pig and rigid because the bedding is compacted around them and uh, they aren't fractured much. And it's a six-mile wide band that transgresses and regresses probably as you go up through the section, <laughs> and even and continues on into the yeah. Derby and Potosi. Yeah. So it's, there's there's many periods of transgression regression throughout the Upper Cambrian. Mm -hmm. Rocks are you know more or less alike through all uh, from the Bon Terre up through the Eminence. The upper the, uh, you know the worst ugliest crystalline carbonate dole stones are in the furthest back reef parts of the Bon Terre and the uppermost part of the Upper Cambrian in the Eminence. White Rock is a mining company term, mm -hmm. an old, old term mm -hmm. that uh, is all, of course, crystalline, mm -hmm. light-colored dolomites. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's mostly what the upper part of the eminence is, what all the eminence is, really. Uh, all through the Viburnum Strand, uh, kind of Indian Creek, it's these grain stones associated with creeks are on top of the reef. I think it's just permeability. Well, I think it is too, but I think the major regional control on that permeability was where the intershelf basins were. Yeah. Shaley intershelf basins uh, were an uh, absolute aquafluid, practically, to uh, vertical and even lateral fluid migration. And that strongly controlled uh, uh, post uh, depositional uh, porosity development. Just yeah. there, because they're still all limestone. The biggest part, I tell you, the biggest parts of the ore bodies are right at the margins of the of the Bon Terre intershelf basin. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you get these limestone tongues that they go right underneath the Viburnum. There are indeed limestone tongues that go underneath the trend, which yeah. is uh, a problem for uh, squirt, squirting fluids in and around the circuitous paths if it all comes out of the mine. Yeah, yeah. Well, the hydrology is a whole other angle that's not worked out very well yeah. and understood at all. Yeah.